Welcome back out on the mushroom trail. It's another just beautiful summer day out here, the final week of July. And today we're setting out into the forests of the Pacific Northwest in search of my favorite medicinal mushroom, the West Coast Reishi, Canoderma organensi. And actually, just off to the side of the trail here, take a look at what we've got. So growing from this western hemlock snag, so if we look up here, we'll notice this is dead standing wood, so this is not a living tree. If we look at the side of this, we can see where pileated woodpeckers have kind of gone to work on the bark or on the side of this tree. We also see little nubs, little conks fruiting out of the side, but the one that we're really interested in is a different mushroom that you can see just off to the right here. Let's swing around here. Let's take a closer look. So this is right about that time of year where I first start to see these and they'll tend to peak in September. Take a look just up here. Look at this, just beautiful. So again, this is the West Coast Reishi, Ganoderma organensi. And look at that shiny kind of sheen that's on the cap of this. We've got a deep red and orange, a little bit of yellow, whiter at that outer margin. Ganoderma translates to shiny skin. So this is sometimes referred to as the varnished conch. And you can see this callus or this shiny little cap that really is catching the light in a very particular way. If we swing down and we take a look, we notice that white outer margin. So this is where it's actually still growing. So this mushroom is expanding out further, this conch edge, and it's growing. And uh, if we look at the underside of this, we'll begin to notice small, fine white pores, right? So this is, again, this is one of our polypores. This is obviously not a gilled mushroom. This is a polypore that's gonna kick spores out of that bottom edge. And boy, just the aesthetic of this, isn't that a masterpiece? Every time I see these, I can't help but just be stunned by the beauty and just kind of what I'm observing in front of me. It's worth noting that Ganoderma mushrooms have been revered in Asia for literally thousands of years where they've earned a core spot in traditional Chinese medicine. In fact, the reishi known as lingxi in China is oftentimes referred to as the divine mushroom or even the spirit mushroom. This is because of the simple fact that it's thought to not only heal the body, but also to heal the spirit and enhance heart chi. You might also hear it referred to as being the mushroom of immortality. And it really does represent a panacea of sorts in traditional medicine systems. Our West Coast reishi is one of about 16 North American reishi mushrooms that can be found out here in the wild. And this one grows exclusively on conifers. If you're out east, you have a strikingly similar species, Ganoderma suge, that grows exclusively on hemlock. Out here in the Pacific Northwest, I typically find this one on western hemlock, although from time to time I also encounter it on Douglas fir. Oftentimes people will confuse the red-belted conch with the west coast reishi. Notice as I tap this, it's hard to the touch. It's not giving way at all. If I swing around and I do a similar tap test with our West Coast Reishi, Ganoderma organensi, notice that we're going to get a much different result. Look at this. Minimal pressure being applied to this outer band here. And look at that. Leaves a clear impression. Same thing goes for the cap. Now the texture on the cap is going to be a little bit different. But take a look at this. So I'm just lightly applying pressure. And you can see it's got this spongy, kind of soft feel. It's got a little bit of an outer shell where that varnish is. So check this out. Here's another great example of a single western hemlock that's actually hosting both of these species that we just looked at. So here we've got a very classic looking red belted conch. This is Fomatopsis munciae. Notice we've got some beads of gatation. So these are those metabolites that are being excreted outside of this. That's a very frequent or common characteristic with these red belted conchs. Also notice we've got some red coloration up top, tap test, 
hard to the touch. And even this outer margin here, it's a little softer, but it's still quite firm to the touch. So very interesting, very common sight out here in the forest of the Pacific Northwest. If we look further down this exact same tree, so down here at the base of this, what we notice is a small little nub extruding. So if I press on this and give it that little push test, you can see it's quite soft. This is actually a West Coast reishi, Ganoderma organensi. In this exact tree, I've actually harvested pounds and pounds of reishi off of. So fascinating to think that they're both here. Check this out right over here, coming off the root of the same exact tree. We've actually got a fruiting from last year's flush of reishi mushrooms. So you can see this is kind of discolored. If I were to wet that, it would still have a little bit of lacquer, but it's in a much different state. So reishi, of course, an annual mushroom that fruits seasonally. Whereas the red belted conch is actually what we refer to as a perennial mushroom. So that fruit body is going to retain its presence on the tree and it's going to grow year after year. Both of these decayers are coexisting on this same tree, but they're utilizing very different strategies. The red belted conch is what we refer to as a brown rot decayer. It targets the cellulose within the wood. Whereas the West Coast reishi is actually what we refer to as a white rot decayer. So it's targeting the lignin. So these are both going to work on the same piece of wood, but they're targeting different aspects of the decay process, which is pretty fascinating and uh, interesting to reflect on the roles that each of these are playing in recycling organic material out here in the forest. So take a look. I went ahead and harvested this reishi and look at this woody base. So this can sometimes be somewhat difficult to cut through. We've got this varnished outer layer. And again, it's very woody. We can see there, it almost looks like growth rings on a tree. We also see where the pores are starting to grow. We've got this finely poured white undersurface where the spores will be released. And those will be kind of a chocolate brown, almost look like cocoa powder when they're released. We also see that fluffy outer margin that we referenced. Also note that this will bruise or show up as a light brown staining with a relatively small amount of contact. So say that you harvest this, throw it in a bag or a bucket or bounces around in your pack, you're likely to see that bruising, whether it's being handled or through the drying process. This is actually a pretty decent sized reishi for July. Um, Christopher Hobbs has a fantastic photo that he'll often show during presentations and it also shows up in his book, which is wonderful, uh, Christopher Hobbs's Medicinal Mushrooms. But anyways, this photo depicts the most beautiful mushroom that he claims he has ever found. And it's a 17 pound reishi mushroom that he pulled out of the Sierras. And every time that I see that, my jaw drops. No matter how many times I've seen it, uh, it's always unbelievable to see. This is still, of course, a stunningly beautiful mushroom. Nowhere close in size, but this weighs a little over a pound. So pretty reasonable for this time of year. Now, you know, Hobbes describes all of these Ganoderma species that have this varnish cap as reishi-like mushrooms. And they're all gonna have a high beta-glucan content, which when you're looking into the world of medicinal mushrooms, that's really what you're going for. You're looking at that beta-glucan content because the higher bit the beta-glucan content, the more it's gonna stimulate the immune system. Now, I also wanna mention that I typically only harvest a very small number of these early reishis because I wanna give the overwhelming majority of them ample opportunity to spore out and you'd be amazed at the volume of spores that a mature reishi will produce. A mature fruit body of this particular species will produce over a billion spores a day. Let's take a closer look at that process. So here are some photos that I took a couple years back that document the progression of a single West Coast reishi fruiting body over the course of about six weeks. The first photo was taken September 15th, 2022 and you can see that the vibrantly colored callus is just beginning to form. In this second photo, taken just three days later, you can get a sense of just how quickly that colored callus is spreading outward. 
there's still a white outer margin present, but that margin is shrinking. In just five days further out, you can see that process moving further along. And if you look closely, you may notice a very thin dusting of spores on the cap. In the days ahead, this will become more and more pronounced as this mushroom begins to pump out an incredible volume of spores. Four days later, the presence of spores on the cap is impossible to miss. And a month later, you can't even really detect the true color of the cap because it's covered in so many spores. And as referenced earlier, at this stage, a mature reishi will oftentimes kick out over a billion spores a day. Interestingly, the spores of reishi are oftentimes regarded as containing some of the most health benefits. These include beta-glucans, triterpenes, and other compounds. But in order to be used effectively, the spores have to be cracked, and doing so can require extensive processing through fermentation, ultrasound, or milling. So they aren't always fully utilized by most mushroom foragers or cultivators. It's important to know that once you harvest reishi, you really want to begin to process it as soon as possible. This is because once it's collected, it'll begin to dry out, and in this process, it'll become hard as a rock and really difficult to work with. I'll generally begin by slicing my reishi into really thin strips and then drying them out for storage. Just as is the case with other mushrooms, I prefer to dry them out in the sun if it's possible. This is because you know, with that exposure to sunlight, mushrooms will actually convert ergosterol into vitamin D2. A lot of times people are really surprised to learn that they can add vitamin D to their diets through sun-dried mushrooms. Reishi is easily the mushroom that I use the most. In most days of the year, I'm typically consuming a hot water extract or decoction of reishi. This was the way that it was traditionally used and I feel that it provides me with a tremendous benefit. I'll usually take about 15 to 20 grams of dried reishi and I'll break it into small pieces. If you've thoroughly dried your reishi slices, you'll notice that they snap when you break them. You may notice that the upper portion can be a little more corky, but the pore side surface will snap clean. I'm breaking these up to increase the surface area and to allow for more of those beneficial compounds to be extracted. From here, I'll add these pieces to a small pot of boiling water. This particular one holds about four cups. I'm going to bring it to a slight boil and then let it simmer and steep for about two hours. I'll do this with two to three changes of water and I'll collect that liquid and store it in the fridge for the next week or so heating up a cup of tea before bed each night. Alternatively, I can also use this liquid to blend it up with the leftover mushroom pieces, which we refer to as the mark, and blend it up, dehydrate it on a fruit leather tray, and then grind it into a powder. And of course, if you want to take this a step further, you can also perform a double extraction to gain greater access to the array of triterpenes present. But the bulk of those polysaccharides and beta-glucans are water-soluble, so I always feel that I'm getting a ton of immune-boosting benefits from a hot water extract. So let's get into some of the specifics around some of the health benefits attributed to this particular mushroom. To begin with, this is widely regarded as being one of the ultimate immunomodulators, and this is widely attributed to the active compounds that are contained within the cell walls that we call beta-glucans. Now, when you look at labels on mushroom supplements, it's really important to note that the reported polysaccharide levels are not necessarily the same as fungal beta-glucan levels. This is because technically, polysaccharides can include not just beta-glucans, but also cellulose, starch, and other polymers. The nice thing about creating your own teas and powders from actual fruiting bodies is that you know that you're getting a really potent level of those fungal beta-glucans in your medicine. These activate white blood cells, increase natural killer cells, T cells, B cells, all of which really kick the immune system into action and improve antibody response. Reishi-like mushrooms are also known to be antibacterial, antiviral, anti-tumor, and anti-mutagenic. 
They're also regarded as being anti-inflammatory. In addition, they benefit the lungs and respiratory tract and have been found to be useful in treating bronchitis, rhinitis, and respiratory allergies. So they're known to have anti-allergic and antihistamine qualities. They're known to be good for the heart, good for the liver. They're also analgesic, meaning that they relieve pain. And in fact, they've also been used to relieve anxiety, insomnia, depression, and to work as a sleep aid. This is especially true for the triterpenes. And I know that this is starting to become a bit of a laundry list of things that would make it seem easier to list what they don't do. But they're also used to increase energy and to improve cognitive function. Lastly, they serve as an antioxidant and anti-aging tool. And I just want to note that nothing in this video is intended to be medical advice, but rather a starting point for all of you to dig deeper. I'm definitely not a doctor, but I will say that Christopher Hobbs, aside from being a mycologist, a botanist, a research scientist, and a PhD, is also an herbal clinician with over 40 years of experience. So I really take what he has to say seriously, and I think that he's provided us all with an absolutely incredible gift with his book, Christopher Hobbs' Medicinal Mushrooms, The Essential Guide. If you don't already own this, check to see if you can pick up a copy at your local library or at your local bookstore. I'll also leave a link in the description below, and if you don't have access to it locally, you can always pick up a used or new copy online. You won't be disappointed. It is an absolutely incredible resource. Christopher Hobbes often jokes about how he's willing to try to follow in the footsteps of the ancients who would consume fresh reishi, and they'd claim that it would make them like the immortals. He notes that the fresh reishi is really strong medicine and to just take a little bit at a time, but that it's incredibly calming and opens up the chest. I really like that he associates this mushroom with bringing about a state of increased mindfulness. This has certainly been my experience with Ganoderma organensi. So real quick, I thought it would be fun to show you a quick way that I've been using fresh reishi for the past few years. You'll notice that as I cut away at the outer margin of this young reishi, it cuts very clean into soft little strips. When I was prepping this a few years back, it kind of reminded me of bacon when it cooked down. So I got an idea. How about a mushroom version of the classic BLT sandwich? Only in place of the bacon, fresh cooked strips of reishi. I tried it out and once I did, there was no going back. So I'll typically just cook up my Ganoderma organensi in olive oil, and I'll generally leave it on the stove, flipping it occasionally for a period of about seven to eight minutes. And what you'll see over the course of that time is that it'll brown up really nicely, just in the same way that bacon does. So the RLT has quickly become one of my all-time favorite sandwiches, and it goes without saying that it's earned a rightful spot on the household menu this time of year. Perhaps the sandwich of immortality? I'll let you be the judge. So just a quick parting thought. You know, my relationship with reishi is really hard to describe without sounding crazy. So I'm not really gonna try, but what I will say is that this mushroom feels different in my body than any other food or medicine that I consume. It sounds funny, but sometimes I feel like this is one of those mushrooms that often finds me as opposed to the other way around. I hope it finds you too. Until next time, happy trails.